about two weeks ago, I opined on this platform that the contest for 2022 general election in this country is actually going to be fought, won, and lost in Western Kenya. And that the person who is going to be declared the next president of the Republic of Kenya will have to carry the day in Western Kenya. And again, last week, I did another video. And in that video, I explained why the alliance between the Deputy President William Ruto, Musalia Mudabadi, and Moses Wetangula was actually taking shape in Western Kenya. And that President Ruru Kenyatta and his elder brother, Raila Amulo Dinga, had actually panicked to an extent that, that they had to dispatch the Kakamega Governor Weekly for Paranya and the Cabinet Secretary for Devolution, Eugene Wamalwa, to the ground to try and counter that alliance. And today, I want to look at that alliance. Will it succeed? And specifically, I want to give six reasons why I strongly believe the alliance between the Deputy President William Samoy Ruto and Musalia Mudavadi will not succeed in 2022. But before we do that, if you are watching this video for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time we produce another video like this one, YouTube will automatically notify you. Now back to the main issue. As we head to 2022 general elections, we are going to witness major political realignments in this country. And one of the realignments which is already taking shape is the alliance between William Ruto, Moses Wetangula, and Musalia Madabadi. Whether that alliance is going to succeed or not, I can't tell. But I'm going to explain to you six reasons why, personally, I believe it's not going to succeed. Because if you ask me, the best alliance for the deputy president, in my view, is the alliance between himself and Kalonzo Musyoka. I'm saying that because that one will add value and probably we are going to look into that in the next video. Let us go straight to these six reasons why I strongly believe Ruto and Musali Madabadi alliance might not work in either of their favors. The first reason, in my view, is the ambitions. The deputy president is an ambitious man. And that's why he is today the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. If Ruto was not an ambitious man, today he would not be the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. Remember, this is a man who joined politics through youth for Kano. And in that outfit, he was just a mere ordinary member. There were several other youth for Kano, youth for, youth for Kano YK92 members, who are very senior like Cyrus Jirongo. But where are they today? But William Ruto, just as a small member there, managed to rise to an extent that today he is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. The next, the next thing which the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya can do is to become the president of the Republic of Kenya. And William Ruto is focused on becoming the next president of the Republic of Kenya. Do you want to tell me that he can decide to sacrifice his ambitions for Musalia Mudavadi. I'm not ruling out the possibility of Ruto sacrificing for Musalia Mudavadi. It can happen. But what of their supporters? Will the supporters automatically shift their allegiance to Musalia Mudavadi? If the DP will say, okay, I'm not going to run in 2022, but I'm going to support Musalia Mudavadi. It will, Musalia Mudavadi is going to benefit. But there's no guarantee that the, the, the supporters of the deputy president will automatically shift their support to the DP. So it's ambition. Musalia Mudavadi is planning to run for the presidency. And that's the only way Musalia Mudavadi can consolidate Western Kenya. Today, if Musalia Mudavadi was to declare that he's going to support the deputy president William Samir Ruto for the presidency, that's likely going to mark the end of Musalia Mudavadi in Western Kenya. So Musalia Mudavadi is ambitious. William Ruto is ambitious. I'm not sure whether either of them will be willing to forfeit their bid for the other. Because I mean, if you look at their ages, William Ruto is still very young. He can wait for 10 years. But 10 years in politics is a long time. So he might not opt for that option. The same to Musalia Mudavadi. 
And the other thing which is similar to all these guys is that Musalim Mudavadi has been the vice president of the Republic of Kenya. Musalim Mudavadi was first elected as a member of parliament in 1998. Sorry, in 1989. That's the first time Musalim Mudavadi was elected as a member of parliament, 1989. In 1992, the UT president was still at the University of Nairobi. Then in 1997, that's when the deputy president first contested. And Musalim Mudavadi has served this country even as a minister for finance. So he's also very senior. So because of this, those ambitions, which they must pursue, I don't think the two gentlemen can decide to support each other. Number two is the expectations of their supporters. Musalia Mudavadi must contest for the presidency of the Republic of Kenya. Come rain, come sunshine. Because without contesting for the presidency, Musalia Mudavadi is not going to command Western Kenya. As we speak today, Western Kenya is predominantly Raila Amur Odinga. But the entry of Musalia Mudavadi is likely to change the equation. Musalia Mudavadi cannot start selling himself as the only lawyer presidential candidate. So lawyers can support him on that. But they have their supporters. Do you want to tell me that today Ruto can wake up and tell his supporters that from the way things are, I'm not going to contest for the presidency. I'm going to support Musalia Madavadi. Because even yesterday, there was a, an opinion poll on Tuko, Tuko News. In that opinion poll, which I believe was sponsored, the deputy president had the support of 66 percent. Raila Odinga I think had, uh, is it 33? Not even 33. Kivutha Kibon had 13. So Raila Odinga I don't know had how many. So it means the supporters of the DP president believes that this is the best bet for the DP. Remember, this is a guy who is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. There is the only thing remaining between him and the presidency is the presidency itself. So convincing the supporters that he's not going to run is going to be an uphill task. So the expectations of the supporters of these two gentlemen will not allow this alliance to work. For now, it's going to work because it's bringing them together to fight a common enemy. The common enemy is Raila Amolo Odinga. Number three is what I call the central Kenya factor. Central Kenya factor. William Ruto as we speak today, has managed to convince the people of Central Kenya that he's the right man for the presidency in 2022. Although the president is trying to counter that, but today if elections were to be held, the people of Central Kenya, probably 70%, are likely to vote for the deputy president. And we know the people of Central Kenya. The people of Central Kenya are people who have tested the power. Through Kenyatta, through Kibaki, and through President Uru Kenyatta. So they understand what power is. The only way the deputy president can win the support of the people of Central Kenya is by providing them with the slot of the vice president. So it means if Musele Mudavadi will not be running mate to the deputy president, then the deputy president will go for Central Kenya. The moment the deputy president will go for Central Kenya, it will change the equation. The people of Central Kenya are well aware and they understand power. That if you, if you support Musalem Davadi today and the DP just watching from outside, it means the DP will make a comeback. So you are, you are going to confine them out of power for another 20 years. So they are not going to allow that. If you allow Musalem Davadi to, to be the president, then Musalem Davadi will run for 10 years. Then because Ruto is waiting, Ruto will come back. So they'll figure out that. So it's going to be very difficult for, for specifically for William Ruto to get Musalem Davadi and not someone from Central Kenya. And that's why I, I'm insisting that Kalonzo Musioka is the best bet. Kalonzo Musioka, if you give Kalonzo Musioka the seat, the people of Central Kenya can actually associate to some extent with Kalonzo Musioka as one of their own. Those are the realities on the ground. Those are the, 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 the realities. But without that, the Kikuyu or Central Kenya factor is going to play a key role. Musale Murabadi 
would be comfortable but William Ruto is going to lose that support and because of uh, even let's say the, the Ruto and Kalonzo I mean and Muslim whatever they set to contest the problem for them is Ruto will now not command Central Kenya because Central Kenya are currently supporting him he's the deputy president he has a chance of becoming the president so that's the another challenge number four is the system the system I've seen the allies of the Duty president celebrating the win of Lazarus, the newly elected president of Malawi. A man I really congratulated. But there's a problem. You can't compare what's happening to Malawi to here. Malawi, that party, is actually making a comeback. After 26 years in the cold. That party was the ruling party was founded in 1959 almost the same time with Kano in fact their flag is also just Kano when Mutharika and the rest took over Mutharika was well educated a law professor from those high end universities in the United States of America people expected a lot of change from him and he disappointed people so the people of Malawi decided to not go back to their factory setting so they went for the, the man so that man was actually supported by the system, Lazarus. And that's exactly what we are going to witness here. If the system is not going to be comfortable with William Zomeruto, even if Muslim Davadi is going to support him, it's going to be a waste of time. They are not going to do anything. They are going to lose. So that alliance is not going to succeed. So the system. But if it will be Muslim Davadi, the question is, is the system comfortable with Muslim Davadi? being backed up by the deputy president because let's face it as things stand today the deputy president and the system are running parallel so the system is going to play a key role number five is what i can call Raila factor and Raila factor in western kenya you see politics is all about personal interest in 2000 and in in 2007 Muslim Davadi was the running mate of Raila Odinga and they were backed up by the deputy president and Raila Odinga won that election but was not declared so Raila Odinga today commands a large section of western Kenya and this is the section which Muslim Davadi is keen on taking from him this is the same section which the duty president is keen on winning so uhuru i mean ruto is keen on winning the support Raila Odinga has in western kenya Muslim davadi as a son of the soil wants to control that support so assuming the two will succeed in kicking out Raila Odinga and then Muslim davadi is running for the presidency ruto is running for then they all of a sudden ruto says i'm going to support Muslim davadi in that case, it's going to succeed. Muslim Mudavadi is going to get the entire vote because Ruto supporting Mudavadi is a good news to the people of Western Kenya. But what, what if it will be the other way around? Because Ruto will argue he's currently the deputy president. So he's closer to the throne than the, than the former vice president. And, and Muslim Mudavadi will agree, now let me support, let me support this man. What will happen at the end of the, of the day? Muslim Davadi will not have a say on how the people of Western Kenya are going to go. And the worst thing for him is if Raila Odinga will still run. Raila Odinga has a solid support in Western Kenya. So Raila Odinga will not compete with the deputy president. And it will be difficult to tell who is going to win. But for now, Raila has an advantage over the DP in Western Kenya. Unless the DP decides to support Muslim Davadi. And because of the factors I'm explaining, like the expectations of their supporters, Supporters of the DP will also not be comfortable if the DP is not on the ballot. And lastly, is what I can call past political pacts. We've had political analysis before. Raila Odinga and Mwai Kibaki entered into an agreement. Was it honored? It wasn't. Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto entered into 
an agreement that I'm going to support you for 10 years, you're going to support me for 10 years. They entered into the agreement and they won the presidency. Is it being honored? No. So it will be difficult to tell the people of Red Valley that Musalem Mudabad is going to be the president for 10 years, then he's going to hand over to the deputy president. They won't buy that kind of narrative again. Now you go to Western Kenya, you tell them, now Ruto will be running for presidency. Musalem Mudabadi will be his running mate. Then, after 10 years, I'll support Musalem Mudabadi. Who will buy that? They'll just go to the history, past history, and realize that in this country we've had agreements, MOUs, being disobeyed. If a court order can be disobeyed in this country, what about a memorandum of understanding between two political players? It can't be. It can't. So because of those six reasons, I know the alliance can work, especially in Western Kenya, but not entirely in the Republic of Kenya. It can't deliver the presidency to either Musalem Ravadi and to William Samoy Ruto. I don't know what you think. And that's my take. And my next video, which I need your opinion, do you think Kivutha Kibwana can win the presidency of the Republic of Kenya? I want to hear your opinion on that because I'm actually working on that video now. So I want to read your comments, then incorporate them in that video. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. Without the support, this channel cannot be where it is today. I want to appreciate you guys. You've supported me. I just don't know how to thank you. But I hope you guys are receiving my appreciation to you guys in good faith. Nothing. There's nothing I can, you know, I can't really explain how I can thank you guys. Come on, if possible, we can have some, <laughs> we can have some nyama <laughs> choma. I'm a chai. Waja hii corona hii kwanza. We can have some. I'll be meeting most of you guys. And uh, thank you.